Hello and welcome back to Computer Tutorials by How I Think. My name is Seth and this is the part two of Exchange Installation and Configuration. If you remember in part one, I went over the hardware um, and I think it was a bit of a lengthy hardware review um, only because I was just excited because this new uh, badass servers had come in and uh, I just wanted to show you guys and so in this part we'll go ahead and install the um, the exchange itself I kind of skipped the OS installation and um, the array configuration um, and these are the, I'm, not, I'm talking about the uh, the HP um, a hard drive array configuration only because that's probably real easy and basic so I would presume that you know that's already done and you know how to install um, the OS portion I've, I, and, and if you go back and do some of the other videos that I have uh, one of them shows you how to install 2008 now granted that was for the standard edition before R2 had come out but it's the same concept uh, and it'll work for R2 also. Now you can install um, server 2008 uh, R2 standard or the enterprise edition. Now in this scenario we're going to go with the enterprise edition only because I'm also going to be demonstrating how to um, perform the database availability group um, and that comes into play if you want high availability for your within your environment so if one exchange goes down you know the whole company isn't crippled you have other exchange servers available to take over the database so one stays in this passive mode the other one's active and they switch over automatically in order for me to show that because DAG uses the built-in clustering services of um, the OS and that only comes with the enterprise edition so you need the enterprise uh, version of Windows um, 2008 R2 when exchange was first installed in our organization uh, first installed it was an, it was standard and at the time we didn't need it um, then as the organization grew we needed to implement DAC and we couldn't do it but I also want what I wanted to do was show you guys how to do um, First of all, how to do CAS array, then with DAG implemented. Now, this is a very complicated setup, um, and you can pick and choose through the videos as to how you how you want to implement this. If you just want one server, you can skip all these videos and you know go to that section with the installation that installs the roles and the configurations all the same. And, but um, I wanted to show you how to you know to to um, to have a high availability both from the database perspective, which is the CAS, I mean the, which is the DAG, and also from the um, client end user perspective, which is the the CAS because they're gonna CAS is the client X server because that's what the users use for Outlook, for OWA, for you know. Uh, pop and mappy and so on and so forth to connect into your organization to check their email and the client access server handles those roles so what happens if you have one exchange server and it goes down well then your clients are out of luck nobody can connect but if you have an if you have a cast array then what happens is even if one server goes down then the then the end user don't see any difference whatsoever they're still able to get through and check their mails and so on and so forth but then on the back end, if even the, the, the database server goes down or the, or the server that has the um, mailboxes on it, if you, even if one of those goes down, um, they still won't see uh, any difference because the DAG will take care of that. So you're talking about double redundancy. So this is, a, a, like I said, um, a, a, a complicated setup, but one that I think you guys will enjoy. Um, and learn from I certainly certainly did I'm not going to go into too much detail I'm just gonna go through the installation portions of it um, 
and go through this. So I think I've talked enough. I really am sorry if I'm just chatting away, um, but I just wanted to show you guys how to do some of this um, complicated stuff also. So first things first, we're on our first server. And so I'll go ahead and close this. What you want to do is you want to come to the technet.microsoft.com. Um, the article is 691354. Here, under the prerequisites, there are certain prerequisites you need to have installed. Um, and obviously, you know, these prerequis prerequisites are that, um, you know, depending on what type of installation is going to be, um, you, you need to have the uh, Microsoft Office Converter Pack installed, which you click and download from here. Um, and then certain other prerequisites as to, you know, uh, HTTP, um, uh, .NET Framework, and so on and so forth, the downloads. So you need those. And you can, as you can see, this is for a typical installation with all three um, roles installed on one server. Typically, this is what you'll copy and paste it into PowerShell. In our case, we're going to go with our first two are the cast servers, so they're going to be cast in the hub transport roles right here. Um, it says this example is for a server that will host the client access and hub transport server roles so that's what we're going to be using first things first I'm going to go ahead and um, download the, uh, the 2010 filter pack it's a small installation so we'll download that quickly 32-bit and we'll install this run and it'll go through and do its download and and then we'll go ahead and install that okay next accept next and that's done okay so now we can close that all right so the next one is we need to copy this code and bring up PowerShell and go ahead and paste that in there okay once you paste it in there and sorry about that <laughs> once you paste it in there um, then you go to the features as to what uh, what roles are these servers that will host um, where is it? Client access. Uh, there you go. Uh, this server will host the client access and have transport role. We'll copy this. We'll paste that in there. And we'll go through the inst installation. There was a restart switch after it, which restarts it. So we reboot it, it came back up. We're going to open up PowerShell again. We're going to paste this command net tcp port sharing um, now within services you can go and set that to automatic um, but we'll do this through uh, powershell and that's it it went through and uh, set up our uh, net tcp port sharing so if we will close this the second thing we need to do is we need to uh, because this is the member server already joined to our domain we're going to go ahead and um, we need to uh, prepare our Active Directory, uh, the schema, and then the domain. And you press any key, and then it gives you some time. Kind of misleading because you want to hit press any key, but it's press any key to cancel. <laughs> This was the 
uh, preparation of Active Directory. So now that Active Directory is prepared, what we need to do now is run um, setup forward slash prepare all domain domains um, or pet and this will go through and prepare your um, domain for you and then after this we're pretty much done with the prerequisites of um, setting up Active Directory because now what we've done is created um, uh, extended the schema so Exchange can come in and install its files, uh, prepare the domain for it, and uh, at this point, then we're going to be ready, pretty much ready to go in and set up our uh, Exchange. But before we actually go in, um, after this, what, what, what we're going to do is go through and set up our network load balancer um remember this is these two servers are the array servers uh as, as my friend calls it the casserole um yeah so these are the uh, cas array servers so you need to have the um either a hardware uh, net uh, network load balancer or a software network load balancer and so we're gonna install the software network load balancing uh, to achieve that so well let's go ahead and pre um, proceed to that